Section 5 of A Holy Life, The Beauty of Christianity by John Bunyan. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 5. Question. But some may say, I go from it, and it follows me. I reject it, and it returns upon me. I have said it nay a thousand times, and yet it offereth itself and its deceits to me again. What would you have me to do? Answer. I would answer thus. Departing from iniquity is not a work of an hour, or a day, or a week, or a month, or a year, but it is a work that will last thee thy lifetime, and there is the greatness and difficulty of it. Were it to be done presently, or were the work to be quickly over, how many are there that would be found to have departed from iniquity? But for that it is a work of continuance, and not worth anything, unless men hold out to the end. Therefore, it is that so few are found actors or overcomers therein. Departing from iniquity, with many, is but like the falling out of two neighbors. They hate one another for a while, and then renew their old friendship again. But again, since to depart from iniquity is a work of time, of all thy time, no wonder if it dogs thee, and offereth to return upon thee again and again, for that is mischievous, and seeks nothing less than thy ruin. Wherefore thou must, in the first place, take it for granted that thus it will be, and so cry the harder to God for the continuing of his presence and grace upon thee, in this blessed work, that as thou hast begun to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, and begun to depart from iniquity, so thou mayest have strength to do it to the last gasp of thy life. And further, for that departing from iniquity is a kind of a warfare with it, for iniquity will hang in thy flesh what it can, and will not be easily kept under. Therefore no marvel if thou find it wearisome work, and that the thing that thou wouldest be rid of is so unwilling to let thee depart from it. And since the work is so weighty, and that it makes thee to go groaning on, I will for thy help give thee here a few things to consider of and remember. 1. Remember that God sees thee, and has his eyes upon thee, even then when sin and temptation is lying at thee to give it some entertainment. This was that that made Joseph depart from it, when solicited to embrace it by a very powerful argument. Genesis 34, 6 and 7 2. Remember that God's wrath burns against it, and that he will surely be revenged on it and on all that give it entertainment. This made Job afraid to countenance it, and put him upon departing from it. For destruction from God was a terror to me, and by reason of his highness I could not endure. Job 31.23 3. Remember the mischiefs that it has done to those that have embraced it, and what distress it has brought upon others. This made the whole congregation of Israel tremble to think that any of their brethren should give countenance to it. Joshua twenty two sixteen through 18 4. Remember what Christ hath suffered by it, that he might deliver us from the power of it. This made Paul so heartily to depart from it, and wish all Christians to do so as well as he. Second Corinthians five fourteen. 5. Remember that those that are now in hell fire went thither for that they loved iniquity and would not depart from it. Psalms nine seventeen eleven six. Six. Remember that a profession is not worth a pin if they that make it do not depart from iniquity. James two sixteen seventeen. Seven. Remember that thy deathbed will be very uneasy to thee, if thy conscience at that day shall be clogged with the guilt of thy iniquity. Hosea seven thirteen and 14. 8. 
Remember that at the judgment day, Christ will say to those, Depart from me, that have not here departed from their sin and iniquity. Luke 13.27 Matthew 25.41 Lastly, remember well, and think much upon what a blessed reward the Son of God will give unto them at that day that have joined to their profession of faith in Him a holy and blessed conversation. Having thus briefly showed you these things, I shall come in the next place. Second, to show you why some, that as to words rightly name the name of Christ, do not depart from iniquity, that it is incident to men to name the name of Christ religiously, and not to depart from iniquity. I have proved already, and now I must show you why it is so, and the reasons are of three sorts. First, some profess him, yet have not saving faith in him, nor yet received grace from him. That some profess him that have not faith in him, nor received grace from him, I will make appear first, and then that they do not depart from iniquity, shall be shown afterwards. That the first is true, consider. Christ says to his disciples, There are some of you that believe not. And again, For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. John 4.64 Now, if they believe not, they have none of his grace in them. For faith is the first and head grace, the beginning and leading grace. He, therefore, that is destitute of that is empty of all the rest. Besides, other scriptures also confirm this truth. James calls some of the professors of Christ that were in his day vain or empty men. James 2.20 that is, men void of grace. And the apostles suggesteth, in the very words below the text, that as in God's house there are golden and silver saints, so there are also earthy and wooden ones. For in a great house as God's is, are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. 2 Timothy 2.20 that is, some for heaven, and some for hell. Romans nine twenty through 23 Now, they are these wooden and earthy professors that he aimeth at in the text, to wit, that they should depart from iniquity, or else their profession would do them no good, and these also that he despaireth of, in the next words, saying, But in this great house of God, There will not only be golden and silver Christians, but wooden and earthy ones. And if any man purge himself from these, from these men's companies, and from these men's vices, he shall be a vessel to honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared to every good work. From all which it is gathered, that there are some that name the name of Christ in a way of profession, that have neither faith nor grace in them and so, consequently, that do not depart from iniquity. For these want that principle, that holy and blessed principle, that should induce them thereunto, to wit the great and principal graces of the Spirit, and they are four. One, as I have said, they want faith, that heart-purifying grace, for the heart is purified by faith. Acts 15.9 I have showed you already that departing from iniquity must be with the mind and affections, or with the heart. But how can that be, where the heart is not sanctified and made holy? For an unsanctified mind cannot depart from iniquity, no more than the Ethiopian can change his skin. Jeremiah 13.3 But nothing can purify the heart but faith. Therefore, Nothing can make a professor depart from iniquity where faith is wanting. So then, when men professedly name the name of Christ without having holy faith in him, they still abide in their iniquity. They depart not from their iniquity, but rather make of their profession a cloak for their iniquity, for their malice, and for their covetousness, and the like. 1 Thessalonians 2.15 1 Peter 2.16. It is not profession, but faith, 
that bringeth God and the soul together. And as long as God and the soul are at a distance, whatever profession is made, there is not a departing, not an heart departing from iniquity. Wherefore to these professors James writeth thus, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. James 4, 8. Men, far from God, cannot think reverently of him, nor so speak and profess him, as standeth with the nature of gospel religion. Wherefore God saith, Draw near hither, that is by faith, and again, let them come near, then let them speak, then let them profess. Isaiah 41, 1. Without faith a man cannot please God, because he cannot without it stand before him in the spotless righteousness of Christ, nor yet depart from iniquity, and live a holy life. Hebrews 11, 6. There are three things in faith that directly tend to make a man depart from iniquity. 1. It apprehendeth the truth of the being, and greatness of God, and so it aweth the spirit of a man. 2. It apprehendeth the love of this God in Christ, and so it conquereth, and overcometh the spirit of a man. 3. It apprehendeth the sweetness and blessedness of the nature of the Godhead, and thence persuadeth the soul to desire here communion with him, that it may be holy, and the enjoyment of him, when this world is ended, that it may be happy in, and by him for ever. But without faith these things cannot be apprehended, and therefore those that want it, whatever their profession is, they will not depart from iniquity. 2. They want repentance. Repentance is another of the great and principal graces which the Holy Ghost worketh in the heart. Wherefore, without this also, there can be no departing from iniquity. It is in vain to expect it of any man. Let his profession be never so stately and great, if he is a stranger to sound repentance. How many are there in our day, since the gospel is grown so common, that catch up a notion of good things, and from that notion make a profession of the name of Christ, get into churches, and obtain the title of a brother, a saint, a member of a gospel congregation, that have clean escaped repentance. I say they have catched up a notion of good things, and have through that adventured to name the name of Christ, quite forgetting to take repentance with them. Repentance should be, and is one of the first steps into the true gospel profession. Mark one fifteen, Proverbs three seven, sixteen six. But some know nothing of it until they come to the end of all, and their repentance will do them no good. Repentance is not but where the true fear of God is. Yea, the fear of God is one ground of repentance. Repentance is the scouring grace. It is that which purges. Repentance is, as I may call it, that bitter pill without the taking, and a sound working of which, base and sinful humors will rest unstirred, unpurged, undriven out of the soul. Can repentance be where godly sorrow is not? Or can repentance be where the fruits of repentance are not? Oh, the fruits of repentance, thick sown by preachers, but it comes up but thinly. Mark 1, 4 and 5 Romans 6.31, Jeremiah 7.3 and 5. Where shall the fruits of repentance be found? Confession of sin is one fruit of repentance. Shame for sin is another fruit of repentance. Amendment of life is another fruit of repentance. Restitution for cousining, cheating, defrauding, beguiling thy neighbor is another fruit of repentance. Luke 19.5-8. Yea, if you would see the fruits of repentance as described by the Holy Ghost, and put together for the further conviction and shame of the impentant professor, look into the second epistle to the Corinthians, 12, 9-11. through 11. But this is a day that was never read of, a day wherein conversion is frequent without repentance. Such a conversion as it is, 
and therefore doth the church of God now swarm with them that religiously name the name of Christ, and yet depart not from iniquity. Alas! all houses, all tables, all shops, have hanging up in them the signs of the want of repentance. Ecclesiastes 7, 27 and 28 To say nothing of the talk, of the beds and the backs of most that profess, by which of these is it that one of a thousand for men and for women, one of ten thousand, do show that they have repentance? No marvel, then, that the name of Christ is so frequently mentioned there, where iniquity dwells, yea, reigns, and that with the consent of mind. I would not be a steward, but were wearing of gold, putting on of apparel, dressing up houses, decking of children, learning of compliments, boldness in women, lechery in men, wanton behavior, lascivious words, and tempting carriages, signs of repentance. Then, I must say, the fruits of repentance swarm in our land. But if these be none of the fruits of repentance, then, O oh, the multitude of professors that religiously name the name of Christ, and do not depart from iniquity. 3. They want love. Love is another of those great and principal graces which the Holy Ghost worketh in the heart. Wherefore, let profession be never so high, yet if love be wanting there, to be sure such professors depart not from iniquity. 1 Corinthians 13. Hence all profession, and subjecting to profession, are counted nothing, where love is not. Love is counted a most infallible sign that a man is in a state of salvation. He that loveth dwells in God, is born of God, and knoweth him. 1 John 4, 7, 16, and 21 Love divideth itself to God and to my neighbor. Love to God is that we keep his sayings, his commandments, his laws. If a man love me, saith Christ, he will keep my words, and he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. John fourteen twenty three twenty four. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. 1 John 5, 3. So then, that professor that hath not love, cannot depart from iniquity. 1. Where no love is, men cannot be tender of the name of God. They are not afflicted, because men keep not God's laws. Psalms 119, 136, 1 Corinthians 13, 5. 2. Where no love is, men cannot deny themselves of that which otherwise they might lawfully do, lest the weak should fall, and the world be destroyed. Romans 14.15 3. Where love to God is, there is hatred against iniquity. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. Psalms 97.10 A man cannot love God that loves not holiness. He loves not holiness that loves not God's word. He loves not God's word that doth not do it. It is a common thing to find men partial in God's law, setting much by small things, and neglecting the weightier matters, paying tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and neglecting the weightier matters. These turn the tables of God's book upside down, making little laws of great ones and great ones of little ones, counting half an hour's bodily service better than a moral life. Love, love is gone out of the country, love to the doctrine of the first table, love to the doctrine of the second table. Oh, how many professors in God's eyes are accounted of no more than sounding brass for want of this ornament, love. 1 Corinthians 13. To speak nothing of the first table, where is he that hath his love manifested by the second? Where are they that feed the hungry, and clothe the naked, and send portions to them, for whom nothing is prepared? Where is Paul that would not eat meat while the world standeth, lest he made his brother offend? 1 Corinthians 8.13 Where is Dorcas with her garments she used to make for the widow and for the fatherless? Acts 9.36-39 Yea, where is that rich man that to his power 
durst say as Job does, as recounted in Job 30, 25, 31, 13, and 32. Love, love is gone, and now coveting, pinching, griping, and such things are in fashion. Now iniquity abounds instead of grace, in many that name the name of Christ. They want love, and therefore cannot depart from iniquity. 4. They want hope. Hope is another of those great and principal graces which the Holy Ghost worketh in the heart, and without which let a man be never so high in profession and so open in naming the name of Christ, he cannot depart from iniquity. As was said before of faith, so we say now of hope, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. 1 John 3.3 3. Here is that excellent office, or rather effect of hope, made manifest. It purifieth, it cleanseth a man, it makes him make the Lord Jesus his example, as well as his Saviour. He purifieth himself, even as he is pure, to wit, in soul, in body, in spirit, in life and conversation. Hope of life, eternal by Christ, makes a man purify himself in obeying the truth through the Spirit. Hope to be with Christ hereafter will make me strive to believe him here. Hope of being with angels then will make a man strive to live like an angel here. Alas, alas, there is a company of half-priests in the world, and they cannot, they dare not teach the people the whole counsel of God, because in so doing they will condemn themselves and their manner of living in the world. Where is that minister now to be found that dare say to his people, Look on me, and walk as you have me for an example? Or that dare say, What you see and hear to be in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Philippians 3.17, 4 and 9 These men had hope, and hope purified them to an example, till they became patterns to others. Is not this now far off? from some professors in the world? Are they purified? Are they clean that name the name of Christ? Are they weaned from that milk, and drawn from the breasts? No, nor their profession is not attended with grace. They name the name of Christ, well, but they do not depart from iniquity. Let a man believe a lie, and according to the reality of his belief, such will his obedience be. Let a man hope for that for which he hath no ground to hope, yet his hope will work with him according to the power thereof. And yet we have a generation of men that profess the blessed gospel, which yieldeth the most substantial ground for faith and hope. Yea, we have a company of men that will be naming the name of Christ, which is the sweetest, the most taking, and desirable name, that is named among the sons of men, and for all that, this gospel, this worthy name, nor yet their naming of it, doth make them depart from iniquity. But what's the reason? Why they have taken up a profession, but want the grace of Christ, the faith, the repentance, the love and hope of the gospel? No marvel, then, if they abide among the wooden sort of professors. No marvel, then, though the iniquity of their heels still follows them, and that it droppeth from them wherever they go. But so much for the first reason, why men do name the name of Christ, and yet do not depart from iniquity. Second, the second reason why some that name the name of Christ depart not from iniquity is, for that though they rest not in bare notions as those forementioned, yet they take up as they sort of the saving grace of God. There are bare notions, there are common workings, and there is a work that is saving, and that will do the soul good to eternity. 1. There are bare notions, and they that have them are such unto whom the gospel comes in word only. 1 Thessalonians 1, 5, 1 Corinthians 4, 19 and 20. Such whose religion stands in word only, and is not attended with a power suitable, that is, there goeth not along with the word, a power sufficient to subdue, and work over the heart to a cordial and gracious close with that word that comes to them. 
yet such is the noise and sound of the word, that they are willing to become professors thereof. There is some kind of musicalness in it, especially when well handled and fingered by a skilful preacher. And lo, saith God unto such preachers, when their auditory is made up of such kind of hearers, and lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song, or as one that sings a song of loves, of one that hath a pleasant voice, and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. Ezekiel 33, 30-32 2. But then, besides these, there is another sort, and they go further than these. For to them the word came, not in word only, but also in power, though not in that or in such a power as is sufficient absolutely against all attempts whatsoever to bring the soul to glory. Of these we read in several places, to wit, that they have tasted of the powers of the world to come, but not so as to bring them safe to glory. Yet thus far they go. 1. They attain light or illumination to see much of their state by nature. With Hebrews 6.4 2. This light standeth not in bare speculation, but lets fall upon the conscience convincing arguments to the bowing and humbling of the spirit. 1 Kings 21, 27-29 3. They submit to these convictions and reform, and may for a time not only come out from them that live in error, but escape the pollutions of the world by the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Second Peter two eighteen through twenty, Galatians three four, and four twenty. Four, yea, so powerful will this dispensation be, that it will prevail with them to do and suffer many things for the vindication of the truth of that gospel which they profess, for the word will be sweet unto them. Christ, the gift of God, will be relished by them. Hebrews six four and five. The powers of the world to come will be in them, some workings of the Holy Ghost will be in them, and joy, which is as oil to the wheels, will be with their souls. Luke 8.13 Thus, I say, it is with some professors, who yet cannot be said to depart from iniquity, that is, for all ado, because the things that now are upon them abide with them but a while. For a while, they believe, they rejoice in the light for a season. Luke 8.13 John 5.35 2 Peter 2.21 So they clean escape from them who live in error for a little or a while, and after that return to their old course, and are again entangled with their iniquities, and overcome. This is called a turning with the dog to his own vomit again and with the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. And some of these are set forth by this, and such like sayings, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Matthew twelve, forty four and forty five. End of section five. Recording by Scarlet, Louisiana.